What do you know? The family man finally spent a little money on himself. Oh, that's for my son. But the rod goes with that, too. Oh, that son, 11-year-old kid? Well, you know how kids are. They've got to have one just like the one daddy has. Well, he gets done fooling with this, he's going to have muscles like his daddy has or two busted arms. <laughs> what are you doing hanging around here, Frank? I told you to cheat the city out of an hour. Okay, so he twists my arm. Now, he just gets the early bus. This is Cotton Hawes of the 30th. He'll be filling in for you. Frank Kane. Hello, Frank. How do you do? From the 30th, where all the rich people live? You had to open your mouth about a bus. Don't you know down to 30th, the policemen take taxis? Somebody down here doesn't like you. That's why they sent you up here with us peasants. Well, I don't mind slumming for a little while. <laughs> Maya, Maya. Hi, How are you? Nice to meet you. Very clean. Got Bird? It. 87 Square Gorilla. Hey, listen, why can't I get a spot on the 30th when I'm still young enough to enjoy it? Bird, Meyer. Liquor store hold up the corner of Merchant and Atlantic. How are you, Cotton? Fine, Steve. How's the rain? It let up a few minutes ago. Hey, Frank. I don't take all the fish out of that lake. I may come up myself this summer. Have fun. <laughs> well, so long, slaves. No, Frank, remember, if they're under 10 pounds, throw them back. Oh, that'll be the day. Oh, and don't be too good, Hawes. It'll make it rough on me when I get back. Don't worry. <laughs> He's a nice guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, we're all nice guys in the 87th. Now, Frank, it just shows a little faster. Too many? Come on, let me call your cab. No mystery on the cause of death. A big shard of glass sliced right to the juggler. See ya. Didn't look like he was in any action. I checked the doors and windows for any signs of forcible entry. Nothing. Well, must have been an accident. He's too good a cop to go out with his coat button. Hmm? Rule number one. The first sign of trouble, you unfold. Oh. Yeah, I forgot. Well, after the first rain, this pavement gets as slick as marble. Now, if he skidded on the sidewalk, he might... Nobody saw anything? You want to take care of this? I should tag it. No, I'll, I'll take care of it, John. This is Steve. Do you want me to... No, I know. I know his wife. I'll take it back. I can wrap things up here if you want to go. Okay. Hey, watch it. Watch it.
coming. No need to push your thumb through it. Yes? Hi, Doc. Long time, huh? Matt, what on earth? <gasps> Nothing, just bleeding a little. You know me, Doc. What happened? Barroom brawl. You know how it is. Guy gets a couple of drinks in him. Finds out you're a fighter right away. Yeah, right in here. Easy. Who's that? My daughter, Linda. Uh, Linda, turn on the sterilizer. Matt's been in a fight. You can meet that car. You must remember Matt Murdock. I used to work with him when he was boxing. I remember him. I remember you, too. You never thought much of fighters, then. I'm not wild about them now. Sit down, Matt. She have to be here? Linda's my nurse now, and a very good nurse. Easy, Doc. What's the matter? Somebody stick a knife in you? Yeah, something like that. I was trying to get out, and this joker pulled a gun, and he started spraying bullets all over the place. Matt, lie down. I, I felt the smack, but I just kept going. How's it look, Doc? The oh, bleeding's almost stopped. You lost a bit of blood, but after a few days' rest... I'll have to remove the bullet, of course. And he'll have to report removing it to the police, of course. What? Look, Doc, I thought you said you were going to help me. I am, Matt, but that's the law. Yeah, but that's for guys you don't know, Doc. This is me. I still, Matt. Look, Doc. You wouldn't want my father to lose his license, would you? He won't lose it if he keeps his mouth shut. I'll level with you, Doc. I got in trouble with the cops a couple of years back. I swung on a guy. With a fighter, that's a felony. A man can do anything he wants to you. But you can't swing back if you're a fighter. Very interesting. If the cops find out I've been in a fight again, they'll throw me in prison, even if it wasn't my fault. Please, Doc. For old time's sake. If my father does what you want, he'll be in the next cell. I don't know what you've got against me, but I'm in trouble. I came to the one man I thought I could trust. And now you want him to turn me in. I'll have to dig the slug out. Get me the forceps. You keep quiet about it, Doc. Don't worry. So don't make him try to talk too much. Yes, ma'am. Is it all right if we ask him a few questions? As few as possible. Thank you. Mr. Evans? Mm. I'm Detective Meyer. This is Detective Kling. Mm. And there weren't any witnesses to what happened at your liquor store, so we'll have to get the whole story from you, if you can talk. Oh, I can talk. Like the fellow says, it only hurts when I laugh. Well, try not to crack too many jokes. Did you get a look at the man who tried to rob you? Oh, I'd know him if I saw him again. If his gun hadn't misfired, I wouldn't be here now. Can you describe him? Tough-looking guy. Dark. Husky. Why did he try to shoot you? Were you resisting? Well, I I've been held up twice before. I figure that was enough. Uh, I went for the gun I keep under the counter. And when his gun misfired, he uh, pistol-whipped you. I wish he had. What do you mean? Well, he hit me with his fist. I've been hit before, but never like that. Some of the neighbors reported they heard a shot fired. That was me. I was lying flat on my back, but I got one shot at him as he was running out. I think I might have winged him. 
If you'll excuse me, the doctor would like for him to have an injection. Sure. We'll check back later. You find him. All I ask is one free swing at him. Relax. Thank you. Is this going to hurt? How does family take it? About the way they always do. As though they've been expecting it for years. I can always tell at home when a thing like this has happened. All of a sudden, I'm the king. The kids crawl into bed with me. Sarah begins to cook all my favorite dishes. And they let me get into the bathroom first in the morning. Funny thing, Teddy never brings it up. But the next day, the next day always, there's a phone call from her uncle telling me how much he needs a man like me and his brokerage firm. You married, Cotton? Yeah, I have two years. I suppose you'd go through the same routine. Well, as a matter of fact, it hasn't come up yet. Most of the killings that go on the 30th, we send over to homicide. We'd send all our business from the 87th to homicide. You'd have to move the larger quarters. I just don't get it. Canaan, of all people, slipping on a sidewalk. I took judo with him. He was like a cat on his feet. You couldn't get him off balance. Only well, we took once, Bert. I don't know. Maybe he had a new pair of shoes on. When I get a new pair, I always cut the sole of the razor. He wasn't wearing a new pair of shoes. And I don't get it, Steve. Yeah, who does? Eight years. Eight years Frank had been on the force. He dodged, you know, I don't know, a lot of bullets in eight years. So he slips on the sidewalk. You figure. 87 Squad, Detective Meyer. Hello, Mr. Evan. How's the jaw? Still hurts, huh? No, no, nothing new. We got the word out. Right. All right, we'll keep in touch. Guy gets clobbered last night and calls this morning and wants to know if we got the guy yet. Hmm. Who's that, the uh, liquor store thing? Yeah. Now, there's a guy who's lucky to be alive. Fella comes into his store, pulls a gun up. So he goes for his own because he says he's tired of being held up. The hold-up man's gun misfires and gets off with a busted jaw. Pistol whipped? No, that's the funny thing about it. The guy belted him with his fist. You know, a liquor store owner can really take a punch. With a busted jaw, he manages to get a shot off, and he thinks he winged the guy. Yeah, they all think they winged the guy. What about it, Cotton? You have much of that in the 30th? No, just mostly breaking and entering of residences uh, when the owners are away. Half the time, we don't get word until they come back and find something missing, and then it's just a question of uh, checking out fences. Man, that sounds relaxing. I got it. 87 Squad, Gorilla. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, sure, I got a picture of Cannon's accident. Why? I'm not so sure it was an accident. In fact, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. What do you mean, not an accident? X-rays show a fractured jaw. I think he was knocked through that window. Could he have injured it when he fell? Well, you can't break your jaw falling flat on your back. At least not where his was broken. All right, we'll be right over. What was that all about? Blandy thinks somebody knocked Frank through that window. The X-rays show a broken jaw. Two in one night? What time that liquor store hold-up happened? Approximately 10.40. How far from where Frank got it? About 12 blocks. I think maybe we're in business. Come on.
Here's the x-ray we took of Canaan. You see that? Linear fracture of the mandible. Now, here's the one they took of the other fellow over at the emergency hospital. Twin breaks, almost the identical spot. And he did walk into one. He didn't have any warning. He couldn't have had. Sure. Now, the imprint came from a bare fist. No brass knuckles, not even a big ring, which would have left a bruise on the flesh. Hmm. The left hook, that's pretty unusual for a hold-up artist. Fast enough to take him with his coat buttoned and hard enough to take him off his feet. Meyer, this is Steve. Did your man get a good look at the hold-up man? Good. Yeah, yeah, I figure it to be the same guy. How many guys go around throwing left hooks? And... I'll see you. All right, let me talk to McLeod. Let me see those accident photos again, please. Yeah, sure. McLeod, this is Corella. Have one of your clerks round up a file of all of the licensed boxers who've been in trouble in, you know, say, the past ten years. Assault and robbery for choice, but I'll set it for anything this side of spitting on the sidewalk. You mind if I use your phone? Yeah, you bet it's urgent. Right. I'm going to call my apartment. Look at that. See the blood on the sidewalk? Now, the liquor store owner said that he'd put a slug into the guy. I thought it was Kanan's blood when I slipped on the sidewalk, but it might have been... Hello, Maureen. Now, this is Mr. Hawes. I left the suit out this morning with a note on it to send it to the cleaners. No, no. Don't do anything. Don't touch it, don't fold it, and don't try to take the spot out yourself. Just leave it. That's right. Thanks. You're kind of formal with your wife, aren't you? Well, that was a cleaning woman. Now, look, I figure if... My wife works. As a matter of fact, she makes more money than I do. Yeah, who doesn't? Now, look, I figure if the blood type doesn't match Canaan's, we've got something to tie in on. It's nice going, Cotton. Pays to be clumsy. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, sure. Good luck. No. 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 You sure you got a good look at him? When a man's pointing a gun at you, you don't forget him. None of those look like him? Not yet. Listen, if it hurts you to talk, just shake your head. Oh, I'm okay. No. No. Bingo, this is him. Matt Murdock. You ever hear of him? I've heard the name. I remember it. Bet on him once against Kid Devlin, many years ago. Cost me 50 bucks. I didn't place him till now. Thank you very much, Mr. Evans. Hitting a guy when you're a fighter, that's against the law, isn't it? That's right. A fighter's fist is considered a lethal weapon. <laughs> you can say that again. Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock. Oh, sure, I used to handle him. One of the best boys I had in my stable five, six years ago. Have you seen him lately, Mr. Carroll? Uh, what's with the Mr. Carroll bit? Just call me Maxie. Okay, Maxie. You know where we can find him? Search me. I lost track of him. After I quit handling him. He was such a good boy. Why did you let him go? Well, he was great against Hammeneggers. What a left. Out of nowhere. You wouldn't believe how this guy could hit with his left. You wouldn't believe it. The only trouble was when I start moving him up in class. You know, against guys who know how to jab. It's all over. Six straight times he gets sliced up so bad they had to stop the fight. I was getting a sore arm from throwing in the towel. He's a bleeder, huh? Bleeder? You could cut him with a sponge. You know what happened to him after you let him go? Well, he tried to get fights in his own for a while, but didn't work out. You know, in the old days, he used the yell for blood, but now with the fights on TV, it's a little different. Who wants a guy bleeding all over your living room? <laughs> yeah, I hope you got a tough skin, kid. What about his family? Well, if he had any, I never met him. Actually, you said he cut easy. Who used to patch him up? Oh, Doc Stagler. After every fight, they have their own little sewing circle. Mm -hmm. Where can we find him? No, I don't know. Doc don't work fights anymore. Why not? Well, he's a pretty good cut man, but one day I sent him a welterweight with a busted hand. Doc sets it so the poor guy can't even make a fist. That's all for the Doc. Stagler, T-A-G-L-A-R? That's right. All right, thanks, Mac. You've been a big help. You're welcome. Oh, this here's my new tiger. Next time he goes, I'll send you a couple of ducats. All right, thanks. 
Okay, killer, flip over. On your back. As usual. What's the mileage? It's about a half a mile from where Frank got him. Could be. See if he's free. The police are here. What? I told you. I'll tell them you're busy. No. I'll see them. You want to see me, gentlemen? You're Dr. Stegra? That's right. I'm Detective Corella. This is Detective Hawes. We wanted to ask you a few questions, sir. Yes. Did you used to treat a prize fighter by the name of Matt Murdock? That's right. Some years ago when he was fighting. My father hasn't been connected with prize fighters for a long time. And so we understand. We talked to Maxie Carroll. You haven't seen Murdock lately, have you? Oh, must be four or five years. Why? Doctor... If Murdoch wanted a slug taken out of his back, do you have any idea where he'd go for medical treatment? Why, I... I suppose he might come to me. Are you asking if he did come here and we didn't report it? Is that what you want to know? You said that, Mr. Stegler. I just wanted to find out... My father happens to be an ethical doctor, Mr. Corella. Never mind, Linda. I gather Matt's in trouble with the police. Yes, sir, he is. Serious trouble? Well, we think he killed a man. I'm sorry to hear that. You haven't any idea where we can find him, do you? Oh, I... Well, I've lost all track of him. We were never what you'd call personal friends. Well, sooner or later, he's going to have to find a doctor if he hasn't found one already. If he does get in touch with you, I wish you'd call us at this number, please, doctor. Of course. Thank you very much. man has to help his friends. Oh, he's a fine friend, all right. I didn't know he was a murderer. You didn't want to know. All right, Linda, it's over. He's gone. You hope. Did you buy that? I don't know. Why'd you let him off the hook so easy? Well, he only used rubber hoses on little old ladies, Captain. This is Unit 1086, Corella. Tell the lieutenant I want to put a tail on a Dr. Stagler, 517 Burnside Street. Around the clock. Roger. What next? Well, he's an ex-fighter. We don't know where he lived, where he worked, if any. We only got one thing going for us. Yeah. Here we are, Matt Murdoch. He's been drawing unemployment compensation for several years now. And his address of record. Well, check that out. He hasn't lived there for five months. Well, he hasn't given us any new address. What about his canceled unemployment insurance checks? I'd like to see the second endorsements where they were cashed. There you go. The most recent are on the top. Anchor Cafe. Hotel Mead. Hotel Mead. Hotel Mead. Sam's Bar and Grill. Hotel Mead. Thank you.
Why well, say it? Jim, the set isn't on. Jim, hmm? you uh, want me to turn the set on? What did I do to deserve a man who knocks on a murderer's door and announces that the police are there? Put him to tracing lost bicycles? No, don't get yourself all worked up before dinner. You know what it does to your digestion. Not fair to Corella. It's not fair to the precinct. Well, everybody makes mistakes. Mistakes, yes. Stupid blunders, no. What does he think I'm running here? A finishing school for women? You're not going to take him off the case, are you? I'd have every right to. Tell me, Harriet. Would you have knocked on that door? I'd have kicked it in and shot at the first thing that moved. But then I've been on the squad longer than he has. Knock, knock, he says. Please open up. The police would like to arrest you. I want more potatoes. If see what you got, then you can ask for seconds. Maybe Mr. Hawes is just being polite. That he was. Mr. Hawes is a very polite man. But sometimes you can carry a good thing too far, like when you're trying to catch a murderer. Mother, please. I don't know. Maybe where he comes from, they have butlers to open the doors for the police. Here, pass this to your mother. Without putting your thumbs in it. I wash my hands. Comedian. That's what we need around here. It's a comedian. Give me lots of gravy. No gravy. It's bad for your complexion. I don't know. Maybe where he comes from, the uh, police phone first for an appointment. But you always tell us we're supposed to knock on a door before we come in. On a bathroom door, yes. But we're talking about the manners of a police department. Now, the best police department is one with hardly any manners at all. Maya. Then he shouldn't have knocked? With a man that's wanted for murder, the only knocking you should do is on his head. Unless maybe it's National Be Kind to Murderers Week. Take a murderer to lunch. Maya. Will you stop with the Maya? I'm just trying to teach these kids the facts of life. They're old enough to know. Thank you, dear Lord, for providing Besides, we're not talking about their manners. We've already separated the children from the cops. But you're just confusing them. Who's confused? Are you confused? No, Daddy. See that? Now pass the rules. Just the same. You shouldn't talk that way in front of the children. Maybe you ought to get cards printed up saying, Cotton Hawes, your friendly neighborhood cop. Politeness, our specialty. Cotton Hawes is a dumb name. Cotton Hawes is a dumb cop. Maya! This guy is a menace to our pension plan. If you work with him, he won't live long enough to collect it. Bird. What? Do you love me? Sure. Can you imagine how an old pro like Steve must have felt? Tap, tap, tap. Would you mind opening up, please? It's me, Renfrew the Mountain. We always get our man. That's better than I'm doing. What? I said, I imagine if a young man were sitting in his car alone with his fiance, he would sooner or later feel the desire to kiss her. Oh, indeed he would. In fact, he does. Okay, buddy, let's break it up. What the... Oh, uh, uh, hello, officer. Let me see your driver's license. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure, officer. Detective Bertram Pling? Oh, now you should know better. Yeah, yes, officer. My, my. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Darling, don't you think I've had too many olives? The last one. Has it ever occurred to you that your wonderful Mr. Corella has probably made worse mistakes? Not like this one. Oh, nonsense. For three years, I've worked at a precinct where the murderers don't shoot it out with the police. They simply call the best lawyer in town who gets the best psychiatrist to testify that they were emotionally upset when they shot their wife or husband. It's all very civilized. And I walk into the 87th like a rover boy. Honey, I, 
I know better. I just forgot. Oh, darling, they know that. You realize I could have had Corella killed? Well, has it ever occurred to you that you might have been killed, too? I'm too stupid to get killed. I don't think that's very funny. You're just as good a cop as anybody in that precinct or in any other precinct. And it wasn't all sweetness and light in the 30th. I know better than that. You know it and I know it. And when I bring Murdoch in with an apple in his mouth, they'll know it. Come on. Let's order. Mr. Miller, that'll be three bucks in advance. Room 21. You got a phone around here I can use? Under the stairs. Sleep. Well, wake him up. What do you want with him? I think I pull the stitches loose and leave him again. Well, you can't come here. The police are already suspicious. What do you mean? They were here, asking questions about you. Well, what did you tell them? Nothing. But they're probably watching the house. Well, then you got a problem, baby. Because if the doc don't help me, I can't get out of town. And if I get caught, the first thing I'm going to tell them cops is who took that bullet out. Where are you? In a hotel on the corner of Main and Front Street. Room 21. And remember, if you got any ideas about turning me in, I'll have company. day shift. Well, Sarah's mother came over. I figured I'd drop around, see if there's anything new in Canaan. Not yet. We've got the word out. Anybody helps Murdoch, he's in real bad trouble. How's Steve? Is he still shook up? Well, that was a dilly, wasn't it? What do you say, fellas? All right, you too? Oh. Uh, any news? Yeah. You've got lipstick on your cheek. It's nothing new. Oh, yeah, well, uh, I was just on my way home. I thought I'd stop by to see what was cooking. How come you took Claire home so early? What makes you so sure it was Claire I was out with? I recognize her lipstick. Hi, Cotton. Hi. Hey, say, Cotton. How are you? Good to see you. Hi. Nothing yet. We just talked about the time I was assigned a pickpocket detail at a convention. And you know what happened? Some guy picked my wallet. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Well, uh, look, can I give you a lift, Meyer? Yeah, I guess my wife's mother went home by now. <laughs> How about you, Cotton? No, no, I, I think I'll hang around for a while. Uh, we'll see you manana. Go on. No word, huh? Well, every stoolie in town's on the Erie for us. We'll hear from somebody sooner or later. Well, isn't there anything I can do? Yeah. Relax. Who 
Who is it? It's Linda. I said I needed your old man. And I told you he couldn't come. You said the police came to see you. What'd you tell them? What do you think we told them? That you showed up and talked my father into breaking the law? Well, if they're watching your place so close, how come you got away? They're watching the office, not me. They're expecting you to go there. Take off your shirt. Hey, how do I know you know what you're doing? You'll just have to take your chances. Sit down. Well, the stitches are all right. What happened to the bandage? I tore it loose getting away from some cops. Come on, make it snappy, will you? I'm leaving town at midnight. That might be a little difficult, from the way those two detectives talked. Well, don't you worry about me, baby. An old buddy's taking me, only he doesn't know it yet. I'll be out of here, on schedule and in style. What? Never mind. Just make sure you do that job right, because if I get caught... I know. You told me. You know, it's kind of a funny spot you're in. You hate my guts, yet you've got to take care of me. What's that for? Penicillin. As you said, I have to take good care of you. There. That ought to do it. You know, you wouldn't be a bad-looking Dane if you dolled yourself up. What's your rush? It's early yet. My rig doesn't pull out for an hour. Did it ever occur to you when I gave you that shot that there might have been poison in it? Hey, are you trying to tell me that no. you... No. But don't press your luck. Catch for me while I file these things? Yeah, sure. Be right back. Okay. Eighty seven squad, Hawes. What's the address? Are you sure of the identification? Yeah. Yeah, I got a good look at him when he signed in. Yeah, it's the same guy. All right, well, just sit tight. We'll be right there. out of this place? Yeah, that's why they have to pay in advance. There are thousands of those used every day by thousands of doctors. Not with your fingerprints on them. He's bluffing. My father was not of this house tonight. How do you know? The man I have stationed outside said that you left at 10.30. You were gone 45 minutes. I went to visit a girlfriend. There was enough time for your father to go see Murdoch. 
He could have just slipped by the policeman and... I tell you, I didn't go anywhere. I think you did. And when I get through with you, the jury will too. You mean you'd frame him? Oh, I don't think I'm framing him. I didn't believe him when I was here before, and I don't believe him now. I don't care what you believe. You can't prove anything. Never mind, Linda. You're wrong about tonight. But you're not wrong Dad, about... Dad, be quiet. Let him talk. No, I'm the one you want to talk to. I went to Murdoch's room tonight. Linda. He called here. He threatened me. How? He came to the house last night. My father was asleep. I took the bullet out of his shoulder. That's not true. She didn't want me to have anything to do with him. I don't care which of you did what or what your motives were. I want Murdoch. You know where he is now? No. Did he give you any idea? Did he say anything about where he was going? Well, only that he was leaving town. He said he'd be gone by midnight. Did he say how? Well, he said something I didn't understand. It seemed so unlike his way of talking. What was it? He used the phrase, on schedule, in style. On schedule, in style. On schedule, in style. And Sounds familiar. He said something about his rig wouldn't pull out for an hour. Rig? Have you got a classified phone book? Yes, in here. Me, Anderson, Babcock, Benton, Truckee. We deliver your goods on schedule in style. You said he was leaving at midnight? That's right. I don't have enough time to put you in custody, but I warn you, if you try to get away... <laughs> don't worry. I've made enough mistakes for one day. At least I'm smart enough not to keep Okay, okay. Well, I'll just send somebody... you just said about making enough mistakes in one day that goes for me too hello give me the squad room 87 squad have him oh hello cotton what a nice coin Look, uh, I'll get Steve. We'll pick you up, okay? Murdoch, you've got a manslaughter rap against you now. Don't make it worse.
Hold Murdoch. Put your hands up, Murdoch. Look, I didn't mean to kill him. It was an accident. Do you hear me? I didn't mean to do it. Save it. Now don't try any left hooks, Murdoch. They're never so tough without a gun, are they? Well, there goes your prisoner, Cub. Well, it's kind of an anti-climax, isn't it? No shootout. Yeah, well, we have our quiet moments. Welcome to the 87. Listen, do you think it'll do any good if I made a pitch in my report for leniency for the doctor and his daughter? After all, they were responsible for capturing Murdoch. Yeah, sure, go ahead. The DA is not out to crucify anybody. Not good. You uh, think the lieutenant's going to chew me out for that grandstand play I made going to Murdoch's hotel alone? Yes, I do. Even though I tell him that you finally got wise and cut us in on the action, he will still chew you out. Hmm. Here you go, Steve. Thank you. Your tea, sir. 87th Squad, Gorilla. When you go back to the 30th, we want you to tell them that we treated you with great class up here. Breaking and entering. Come on, John, let's go. As a matter of fact, I like tea. 